do yesterday, and we've gotten a little off track. Um, first of all, the state of the coach before any coaching session is primary. You must have some kind of preparation for yourself before you walk in with that client. And in the beginning, um, and I used to do a little ritual like review with my micro muscle muscle movements, go into the high performance state, or do something like clear myself completely from the last client. Um, and that was some kind of ritual. I had a little log book where I kept my notes for each client and the time. I would sign it off and draw a box around it. This was a ritual for me to say that's the end of that one. Now it's a clean page. Turn <coughs> the page and start new. And so create some kind of ritual for yourself to clear yourself in between clients and to make sure that you're fresh because each client deserves the best you can give them when you come in. And maintaining your state so that you also work with your unconscious. Please support me in putting aside anything. You know, that little voice that says, oh, by the way, you could have done this or you could have done that or you could have done that with that last client. That's finished now. And so all of those little reports, I ask my internal dialogue to deliver it to me between clients. Before the next client comes, I write it down. When I draw the box, it's finished. No, don't give me any more information now. And now I'm clear to go for this client. So, Create some kind of rituals for your own state prior to each coach, uh, each client. Um, the first session with your client is usually the contract and your gain and rapport. Um, and the contract can be a formal contract uh, if you haven't made arrangements with them on payments or how long you expect the coaching to last or um, how many sessions you think and how much it's going to cost. All of those details you'll work out um, in some kind of business plan that you create for your business. But that is something that you work with the client in. That's where rapport is very important because they may even say, well, it's too expensive or whatever. You get into rapport with them very, very carefully. As part of that, um, I call it um, um, the responsibilities of the coach and the responsibilities of the client. At this part, this point, this is where you tell the client what you are going to deliver and what you're going to expect of them. The client can say, I really want to meet the objective. But they may not. That may be the hidden agenda. I mean, there are people who have been going to consultants for, you know, and coaches for a lot of years. Keep saying, I want this. But it never happens. Whose fault is that? They always will tell you it's the coach's fault. But it's actually they had a hidden agenda. They don't really want to do it. And nobody ever discovered what that hidden agenda was. Right? So they may give you, oh yes, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to do all of this. But that's where you calibrate. You calibrate and they go, you go, you know, in my own notes I put down, I don't know whether this person is going to really agree to this or not. The responsibilities of the client are really important for you. For example, if you say to them, I, I have a task that I have worked hard to prepare for you. Um, if you agree to do this task, then I want you to complete it. Can you do that? And they'll say, oh yes. Or they'll say, hmm. At that point, you know that there's something wrong. And you have to go back and figure out what the intention of that is. 
is. What stops them? And you use that phrase, what stops you from saying a really congruent yes to this? Like you said to the other thing I just asked you. What's the difference between these two answers? When you say yes, you're willing to pay the fee, as opposed to, eh, you don't want to do the task. What is the difference between these two? In other words, this is your place that you are testing their congruency and you're letting them know what you expect from them. It's the rules of engagement. Okay? Um, you establish a frame for your relationship. I asked you last night to make a metaphor for your coaching. Um, you can take that out now. Um, you're also going to have how much time, your intentions with the coach and the client. But these are all sort of one together. Um, they're sort of the same thing, but I broke them out so that you could see them more specifically. You establish a frame because this is what you're going to say to them. Um, you're going to tell them that you're going to be using some processes that, that may not be processes that they're familiar with. Sometimes you're going to ask them to maybe sing, you may ask them to dance, you may ask them to move, you may ask them to play a game, you may toss them a ball. And by their reaction, you have to calibrate whether that's going to be appropriate with them. Um, four, you're going to elicit information, verbal and nonverbal. You're doing that constantly. The nonverbal are those calibration points that I told you that you're writing in the column. And then the verbal, the verbal ones are the ones that you ask in the specifier questions and that kind of thing. Um, you're going to establish the client's goal, goals. And um, that is define their goals with them. You're going to refine them and you're going to challenge them. The challenging I already showed you by the misparaphrase an easy one, how I did you. Oh, you want to be a stripper? The misparaphrase. Th those are ways that you challenge. Um, um, refining, I mean, you're constantly trying to use that um, verbal package to get more information and more information because sometimes people will have a dream, but that dream is not specific enough for them to really see it. And if they can't see it, then they can't feel what they're going to feel when they get it. And they can't hear the things they're going to hear when they get it. They can't smell and they can't taste when they get it. Then they're never going to really get it unless they can really step into it fully and completely encompass and be inside of that dream. And so it's very important to get it refined and defined, refined and defined. Um, the next thing is you create an action plan with the client. An action plan is, a, is actually a plan, and you get the action plan by using that verbal package. Remember, we started working with the party. You can get the exact date. You can get how many people. You can Specifically, what is your goal for specifically for the first week? Yeah. And you hammer it down. How specifically are you going to do that? When specifically are you going to make the application? Um, where specifically are you going to go for blah, blah, blah? And you get that action plan. Getting the commitment. And that's always the hard one. The commitment for them to stick to the action <coughs> plan. And that's where your calibration from day one begins. Every time you saw them go, uh, 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 or hedge a little bit on an answer, that's where you're, you've been calibrating. You know when they say they're going to do it or they're not going to do it. Because you've calibrated their body, the whole thing, and you know whether you have it hit it or not. Um, and then whatever follow-up procedures you have, you know, the next meeting, by telephone, um, by uh, 
you know, this two months, one month, write me an email, or however you set it up with the client. But you do follow up on each of the sessions. Does this happen all one day? No, no. No. And this is something that you walk on, uh, you work on slowly to establish it, and you start working on the goals. And you'd be surprised, the clients will start working on one thing, and then right in the middle of the session, they'll go, you know, this thing came up at work, and it's really sort of changing everything. And then that's where you, as the coach, go, okay, we have this thing we're working on here, and we have this over here that just came up. Which is the highest priority? And if we, I'm happy to work with you on it, but we'll have to look at our action plan and reset our goal and our time sessions. Because this is a way that sometimes the clients get out of working on their action plan. They do a self-sabotage. Well, I can't do it because my mother got sick. <coughs> and I have to spend all this time doing working with my mom. And, and what you have to do at that point is you make a challenge. You I'm have to make a challenge on you know, this has happened twice already. I'm, I'm calling it. Be clear. Yep. And, and, uh, and then they, will, they may go and then may never come back. And so it's very important for you to keep those lines clean so that you can make sure that they understand that this is this is who you are and this is what you're doing um, and, and, and it's a very hard line to do but it's hard it's easier to get a little closer to them than to get too close and then pull back Absolutely. and the problem is is if you allow them to become think of you as a member of their extended family they're going to fail again like they did in their life with their family and whose fault is it going to be? Yours. It's yours. They're going to tell everybody it's your fault. You don't want that kind of talk. You want only successes to walk out. 